again, everyone. Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Uh, yes, indeed, it's been a little while since I've made some YouTubes. Super busy here, folks are calling, uh, lots of new projects and work coming up. I do have a new product that I started earlier this year, which I have talked about in a previous video, and I will be making um, another video about that uh, later. And I also have a collaboration that it has been basically this entire year that we're setting up, almost ready to start talking about. Not quite yet, but when it is, you can bet everyone's going to know about it. We'll be talking about that quite a bit. And so here we are right at the beginning of August. Um, and uh, the first weekend of August in Canada is a long weekend. So this week is a short week. And I've got uh, all the data for the lumber prices till the end of July. And so people will have noticed that uh, in May and June, uh, lumber prices were dropping. Not unusual. Um, they had crested sort of up maybe a little bit more than the market could bear uh, in the spring. Uh, also not unusual, as I've said before, uh, that um, sort of bef in the beginning of second quarter usually is a, a more uh, higher volume sales, busier time for the sawmills as the large volume buyers, the large U.S. home builders, are making or have made their purchases uh, and um, are on the way to receiving their wood for their planned expected projects um, right now in the building season. So at this time of year, even though this is construction time, it's not that busy for the sawmills because they've already sent off the wood that most of those um, large customers need. Uh, and so we do have now uh, during July, uh, prices did pop up just a little bit. Uh, it looks like maybe that drop that I said for May and June may have been a little bit too much. Um, an important thing to note is that the beginning of July this year, the uh, stumpage in BC, uh, British Columbia stumpage rates that are set by the government and um, in this uh, most recent method of calculating the stumpage is based on lumber prices. I think there's a six month lag there. So uh, whatever the uh, lumber prices would have been in January, that's what the Ministry of Forests uses to base the stumpage rate, which is the timber uh, access um, cost to the sawmills. So now while the prices are sort of dropping or leveling off, the stumpage has increased. And then, you know, next quarter, the reverse will be true. So that's, kind of a little bit of a disconnect and um, does explain the sort of momentum of uh, a little bit of an increase and in stable lumber prices for um, July. And uh, today is Thursday, which is our um, day that Madison's does our market survey, calling around to the sawmills across North America for the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track every week and my preliminary data, which is for the benchmark Western Spruce is down. It dropped quite a bit. Now, the other very important thing that's a change that people will want to know about is in futures. I did a video a little while ago um, explaining, you know, futures and the difference between futures and cash or print, which is what Madison's is. After um, like three years of myself and Madison's um, being quite vocal about how futures was just really um, not the best uh, way that the system was running, um, they are making the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is making a big change coming into effect this Monday, August the 8th. And so what's happening is the uh, contract sizes have shrunk by uh, to one quarter. So it used to be a, a one rail car and now it's one truck. This will increase the liquidity. What I've been saying about futures is that it's like not really relevant because um, it's so narrowly traded that um, just a very few amount of people, a very few amount of um, players can have a large impact. So this uh, reduction in the size of a contract 
um, is going to help increase the amount of people, the amount of companies that can be involved in futures, and that will help to increase the liquidity and to make the you know buying and selling price a little bit more uh, you know equitable. Um, the other thing, there's two things that changed was the volume and the um, oh, and then the delivery location uh, is the uh, greater the Great Lakes, um, the St. Lawrence Great Lakes area, and the mix of the uh, product species is now including eastern spruce, where previously it was pretty much just uh, western spruce delivered into the Prince George uh, hub at the Prince George Inland Container Terminal. So now it's bringing the activity of where the futures um, contract reality is uh, closer to the market in central uh, Canada, US, uh, increasing the uh, product input to uh, Western and Eastern and uh, lowering the volume size of each trade um, from uh, by one uh, by to one quarter uh, from a rail car to a truck. Uh, so right now let's look at the graphs real quick because I'm going to explain uh, more detail about what I just said, uh, what's happening with the lumber prices uh, now to the end of July. Uh, what can we probably possibly expect for August and potentially September as uh, my regular viewers will know I always say sort of Labor Day starts to be the beginning of the end for uh, lumber sales for the year and uh, price uh, you know dropping or leveling off. Um, Labor Day is also kind of marks where the uh, do-it-yourself and remodeling activity on an individual basis does increase usually it depends on the weather but if the weather is good in september a lot of folks hit the retailers for wood to um, do projects on the house either indoor or outdoor which in turn increases the uh, buying by the retailers and potentially lifts up the lumber price uh, a little bit that uh, had been dropping because the wholesalers and the large volume end users are uh, stepping away from their buying for the year so let's look at the graphs in the table showing you the current price uh, with the historical and then I'll come back with some more details about all of these things I just said. So here we have that benchmark item Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number 2 and better. The most commonly traded uh, largest volume by far uh, price is ending the last week of July this year. Take a good look at the very end here on the right the pink line uh, last year 2021 ending almost exactly the same as the previous year 2020 very unusual i don't think i've ever seen that before and there were completely different reasons why at the end of each year that happened and then if you look again over to the left for this year the yellow line following a very similar trend to last year the pink line uh, earlier in the year and not rising up so high. So what we have right now for the last week of July, price is flat for two weeks at US $684 per thousand board feet uh, on this benchmark item. You can see, as I said, that price uh, was dropping and then hit a little bit lower than maybe it should have and uh, rose just a little bit and flattened out. Here we have those six benchmark items, uh, Western Spruce at the very top line, as you can see, 684 for two weeks. That's up from 625 a month ago. Southern Yellow Pine uh, also recovering a little bit. And then below that, the third line, Eastern Spruce Pine Fir. Well, that one dropped down. This is why we cover the entire market every week. Some prices are up, some prices are down, some prices are flat. It's not always uh, the same. Customers will switch between um, what item suits them the best. Those three top items all meet the building code. If you're uh, making a single family home anywhere across North America, you can choose Western Spruce, Southern Pine, Eastern Spruce, whatever you like. The fourth price studs, can't build a house without studs. This is the Western Spruce. The fifth price, Douglas fir, and then your Canadian softwood plywood. Uh, again, you can't build a house without some kind of panel, either plywood or OSB. And here we have those same six items presented as a graph. Uh, you can see where uh, two years ago in July of 2020, 
that was already uh, starting to be quite a run-up compared to the previous 10 years. Uh, the prices at the um, during that time when housing was depressed hovered somewhere around between two fifty and four hundred dollars per thousand board feet. Even two years ago, that was closer to six hundred. Shot way up uh, in the end of the second quarter last year to above sixteen hundred, which obviously was not going to stay that high, and then corrected too far down. And then in the second quarter of this year, uh, once more rising up, but not as high as it had in uh, that time last year. So the volatility is starting to work out. And here we are getting towards slower time. But you can see on the far right of this graph how prices recently have started to flatten out. Okay, great. And so, you know, it's really important to have a look at the history. We know what happened last year. We know what happened this year in February. Uh, last year in November with all of the incredible storms and flooding, British Columbia, uh, Washington State, Northern Washington State washing out and destruction of the highway, which is still now being rebuilt and it's going to take a while, the Coquihalla. And the railways also were washed out and uh, destroyed. It took a very, very long time for the wood um, that had been in the sawmill yards uh, then to start getting shipped out not just lumber, but everything, you know, all the produce and the um, consumer goods that move across from uh, Eastern Canada here into British Columbia and that move from the port of Vancouver into Eastern Canada. It was a big mess that really is still not worked out, but at least uh, not such a horrible situation as it was in November. And so currently right now, we have uh, right here at the very beginning of August, sawmill order files at about two weeks. Uh, which is actually quite strong, um, usually, or sort of, it's not unusual for this time of year for the sawmills to be able to put your order on the line in three days, or even prompt that day, uh, and then ship to you within three to six weeks, the normal amount of time, and this makes the negotiation between the customer and the producer um, sort of easy and smooth, because there isn't all of these unknown things like, I don't know what the price is going to be in six weeks. If I don't put your wood on the line, if my order file is for six is for six weeks from now, um, I might not necessarily want to quote uh, what I what the price is going to be today. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go up or down in that amount of time. Uh, inventory, lumber inventory in the field is quite good. There's supply. Um, it's not really a problem for customers to find what they need. And as I said. Uh, uh, not particularly busy time of year right now in terms of ordering by the large volume customers and uh, people are still mm, somewhat hesitant because they still aren't sure if prices are going to be going down further. You know, they, they reach such incredible highs that a lot of people kind of think, well, it must go back down by the same amount, which it's not going to do. It's we're we're having a new bottom for lumber prices much higher than it was over those 10 years uh, from 2008 to 2018. Um, so that means when customers have this feeling that maybe lumber prices will go down, they just order small volumes of really specified loads of exactly what they do need right now, keep coming back and ordering these small volumes, a little bit irritating, but what can you do? Uh, it's easier for the sawmills if customers just go ahead and buy their 40 rail cars a week or whatever it is. Um, which we had, you know, last year and earlier this year, but it is time to, uh, for things to usually slow down a little bit. So a two week order file here, uh, at, well, at the end of July is still pretty good. Um, now to give people a much larger view rather than these sort of week by week updates, um, over the past year and since the beginning of this year, there have been quite a few announcements of, uh, sawmills, um, uh, coming back online, sawmills that had been closed, even new sawmills being built and existing sawmills being modernized. And so um, it takes a year or 18 months for that to happen. Uh, putting a mill um, into operation is a very big deal. The uh, company will first need to secure a timber supply and then work on getting the equipment and uh, having all of that installed and then uh, staffing and all these usual things. Uh, contacting their customers, uh, getting some regular business happening. Uh, 
So we haven't really had a lot of activity in um, mill uh, building or uh, reopening um, until uh, past year or so, just because of how you know housing was depressed and uh, um, sluggish. Uh, and so why would we um, add volume if uh, there's not that many uh, purchases for existing production? So it's quite encouraging, you know, uh, sawmill um, reopening or uh, building or updating is a, a pretty significant investment. It does demonstrate that um, the companies ha are, are applying the revenue that they've made in the last couple of years with these higher lumber prices and the larger volume sales back into their business, which is great. Um, and so in light of that, as I said, uh, Madison's has started a new product uh, this year because it looks like there's uh, some important uh, news and information that people really want to have. Uh, it's called the uh, Madison Sawmill Curtailment Lookout. Lookout uh, comes out once a month and it uh, shows you uh, who curtailed. Uh, there was um, a couple of months ago, a bunch of mills up here in BC curtailed or uh, uh, went into like slow down because they had uh, problems shipping out their wood. As I was explaining earlier, this month we in July we had um, a operator in the U.S. South uh, curtailing a couple of mills due to uh, difficulty getting a timber supply, and then we have these mills that are um, upgrading or investing, and uh, we had one mill burn down in uh, I can't remember which state it was in the U.S burned down completely, the mill is gone. Uh, so I'm gonna do another video just on the lookout, but I'll leave it here for now. Uh, anybody who wants any of this information, the weekly lumber prices, as I said, 500 individual softwood lumber and commodity prices, plus the market commentary uh, on my dashboard, available to subscribers to my dashboard uh, every Friday morning. Um, the um, other products that we do, the BC Coast Log prices comes out once a month, Wood Pellet prices comes out once a month, the Madison's Forest Pulse, which gives you an overview of forestry, timber, uh, lumber, and uh, housing, uh, is quarterly. And now the Lookout, a complement to our annual um, sawmill directory, which is another uh, core product started in 1952, used to be a printed book, 300 pages, uh, and now it's an online dashboard, which we do in collaboration with our good friends in the US called Lumber Blue Book. And um, the data in the directory, it's quite extensive. It's much more than just, you know, uh, name and phone number. We include uh, the species that the facility handles, the product mix that they make, uh, everything from production volumes, uh, number of employees, where do they export to, uh, their grading agency stamp number, all this kind of stuff. And um, that is uh, something that is uh, available for uh, customers who have a login. And so in a sort of complement to that, we now do the monthly lookout um, as a PDF newsletter showing, uh, you know, again, the um, lumber manufacturing facilities across North America and where are they curtailing. So you can sort of have the two products, see what their production volume uh, capacity is, and then, you know, the duration of the curtailment and how much of that volume is going to be taken offline. And so the directory, you know, it includes the primary sawmills, the secondary remanufacturers, the panel mills, you know, OSB and plywood, uh, pulp and paper, uh, cedar, shake and shingle, um, wood preservers, and the wholesalers. So uh, the Canadian listings, I think it's uh, close to 1,500 operations. We're just working on adding the U.S. into that. Uh, the U.S. Um, lumber manufacturing industry is about three times the size. So let's say at some point there'll be 4,000 uh, entries in there. But for now, uh, that is what we have available. And like I said, I'll be doing another um, video uh, with the um, images showing you what is actually in the lookout. So if you like what you see here, subscribe uh, here on YouTube. If you would like to see uh, the full um, list of the commodities that we track, the prices and what those prices are, uh, go onto my website. There's a link here in my caption. 
and click uh, at the top. There's a menu to subscribe, fill out a form, and we'll send you the sample. And uh, you can see the scope of the products that we make um, if you decide that you would like to subscribe to one or another. And click like here on YouTube so that it will get recommended to uh, other viewers.